Hello, today I'm going to review the time and billing settings when entering a new matter. I will also show you how to create time and expense entries. You have two options to create a new matter in the system. The first is to click on the Matters tab in the upper left hand side of Firm Central. From here you would select the new matter icon. The second option is to click on the briefcase icon located at the top right corner next to Search Firm Central. Once you are on the matter form, you will see a section for billing information. Expand the section by clicking on the plus sign. Here you can enter a billing contact name. You would use this feature if the billing contact is different than the client for this matter. Billing type allows you to choose between hourly, flat fee, or contingency. Lead attorney gives you the option to assign a lead attorney to the matter. Choosing this designation allows you to create a pre-bill group by lead attorney. The invoice template will default to standard with the option to select a custom invoice template to use for this matter. If the client associated to this matter has given you money in trust, you can set up a trust account here on the matter page or on the time and billing tab, trust account sub tab. To set up a trust account on the matter page, Click the checkbox on the left side of Add Trust Account to enter the trust account details. After selecting the checkbox, you will be prompted to create a trust account name for this matter. You can select a different date open by selecting the calendar icon. Enter an opening balance and description. You have the option to enter a minimum balance amount. And lastly, you can choose to have the payments auto-deducted from the trust account when an invoice is generated for this matter. If the billing type for this matter was hourly, you have the option to set custom user rates for this matter, which will override the standard hourly user rates. To do this, expand the Matter Team section and enter the matter specific rate for each user. Save your changes. Next, I'm going to show you how to utilize the timer found in the banner line. To use the timer, Select the orange play button at the top right corner of Firm Central located to the left of your name. Once you select the play button, it will start the timer. To add details to the timer, select the gray time drop down arrow next to the play button. The timer will continue to run after selecting this. When you select the gray time drop down arrow, you will see a pop up of your timer. From here, you are able to add details for the time entry. Select Add Details. Your timer will continue to run unless you select the Pause button. The required fields are noted with a green asterisk. These include Client Name, Matter Name, and External Narrative. In the Client Name box, type the client's name or hit a spacebar to see a full listing and select from the list. You have the same options in the Matter Name box. Begin typing the matter name or hit the spacebar to see a full list of associated matters for the specific client. Enter the description for the time entry in the external narrative box. This description will be displayed on the invoice for your client. Activity code and internal notes are optional fields. When using activity code, you can begin typing in the activity name or click on the drop down arrow to select the appropriate activity. You can also add internal notes pertaining to this time entry. These notes are for yourself and your team. They will not show up on the invoice. In the Rates section, you will notice that an hourly rate will appear if the matter is set up as the billing type, hourly. You are given the option to override the rate for the specific time entry. To do this, click Override and type in the default rate for the time entry and click Apply. You can also select the checkbox next to non-billable time to have the activity show up on the invoice as a no charge to the client. After entering the details, you can hit Submit or Save. If you select Submit Time, your timer will stop and the entry will be sent to your weekly timesheet. If you select Save and you have not paused your timer, it will continue to run. You can start a new timer while you have the current timer running. 
If you start a new timer, the original time will automatically pause and a new timer will start. To start a new timer, select the gray time drop-down arrow and click on New Timer. The new timer will not start until you hit the gray play icon. Once you select the gray play icon, any timers currently running will be stopped and the new timer will start to run. Any saved timers will remain in the timer queue until you submit time for each timer. You will see a number appear on the left-hand side of your name in the upper right corner. The number represents how many timers you currently have open to submit in your weekly timesheet. You can delete a timer in your queue by clicking on the X on the right side of the time entry and click Delete. To submit the timer in the queue, open the timer and click Submit Time. You can also add time entries using the weekly timesheet. To do this, click on the Time and Billing tab in the Firm Central banner line. Your name will show in the upper left side of the page with the option to select a different user from the drop-down list. The weekly timesheet will default to the current week with the option to change the week by clicking on the calendar icon or using the arrows. To add a time entry, select the New Time Entry button at the top right side of the page. All required fields are noted with a green asterisk. When you add a new time entry, a new line item will appear on the weekly timesheet. You will be prompted to enter a client and matter name. You can type the client name or hit the space bar to see a complete listing of clients in Firm Central. You have the same options for the matter name field. If you hit the space bar, you will be presented with a list of correlating matters. You are required to enter an external narrative for the time entry. This narrative will show up on the invoice as the activities description for your client. Under each day of the week, you can enter the total amount of time spent on this particular activity. Once you have filled in the total time, you have the option of selecting an activity in the Details section. After selecting an activity, you can also select a task if you have ABA codes enabled. Next, confirm the hourly rate is correct. To update the rate, click on the blue Rate hyperlink. Click Override and type in the proper rate and select the blue Apply button. If you want to mark the time entry as non-billable time, add a check mark in the non-billable time box and the rate will update to show NB. The paper icon underneath Task refers to adding internal notes for yourself or your team. Internal notes will not show up on the invoice. After completing your time entry, be sure to select the blue Save button located at the bottom left corner of your weekly timesheet. To delete a time entry, select the gray X on the far right of the entry and confirm your delete. Next, I will show you how to add expense entries. To do this, click on the Time and Billing tab and Expense Entry sub-tab. You will be redirected to the Expense Entry page, and your name will show on the upper left-hand side with the option to select a different user from the drop-down list. The expense sheet will default to the current week, with the option to change the week by selecting the calendar icon or using the arrows. To add an expense, select the Add Expense button located in the top right-hand side of your page. When you add an expense, a new line item will appear on the expense sheet. The required fields are noted with a green asterisk. You can change the date of the expense by selecting the blue link under the Date column. After selecting a date, you will be prompted to enter a client and matter name, similar to adding a time entry on the weekly timesheet. You are required to enter an external narrative for the expense, which will show up on the invoice as the expense's description. Next, you have the option to select an expense code, quantity, and cost for the expense. To do this, click on the blue link labeled Expense Code Quantity and Cost. Select your expense code from the drop-down listing. If your expense had a rate associated with it, you will see it populate here. Enter the quantity and the system will do the math for you.
If you do not have a cost associated to the expense, you can enter a quantity and cost or just enter the total for the expense in the total box to the right. Your expense can be marked as taxable using the checkbox under the column taxable. You can also enter internal notes for yourself and your team by selecting the paper icon under the detail column. Be sure to select the blue save icon at the bottom left hand corner to save your changes. To delete an expense entry, select the gray X on the far right hand side of the entry. Click yes and confirm your delete.